As gardeners, we try to use all we can to grow the perfect garden naturally. Hi, I'm Ben, and in today's video, we're going to look at some simple ways to make use of common items of kitchen and household waste in the garden. They will all help to boost your soil's fertility, but best of all, they're free. Have you had your morning cup of coffee? Great, but don't be in a hurry to throw away those coffee grounds. Now, look at this. Have all my Christmases come at once? I reckon so. I salvaged this from the local coffee shop and uh, I've got a whole sack full. Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? Well, coffee grounds are a superb natural addition to any garden. Wake up and smell the coffee, folks. Coffee grounds are a great source of nitrogen. They've also got the two other major plant elements, phosphorus and potassium, and they've got micronutrients in them too. This is great stuff, so let's get on and use it. So the first use of coffee grounds is as a mulch around your plants. When applying them, we just want to sprinkle them on. We don't want to put them in great mats, really thick mats, because what that'll do is it'll cause the coffee grounds to form a mat, which will make it much harder for uh, rain to penetrate. So just sprinkle them on like this, just lightly over. There we go. And you can use them in combination with other mulches as well. The nitrogen in the uh, coffee grounds isn't available to plants immediately, but the microbes in the soil will gradually break that down into a form that plants can use. So it's kind of like a slow release fertilizer, really. One of the things that people are a bit worried about when using coffee grounds is the acidity. Coffee is naturally quite acidic, but most of the acidity is lost into the uh, coffee when you actually brew it. Coffee grounds themselves have a pH of around 6.5 to 6.8, which most vegetables actually really like. And the amount we're applying here is never going to have any effect on soil chemistry anyway, so you don't really need to worry about it that much. Just leave it on the surface, don't dig it in, and a little word of caution, there are some plants like tomatoes where if you're applying lots of it, they won't really like that. So do use it sparingly as we have here. Or add them to your compost heap. And this is where their high nitrogen content really comes into its own. Despite being brown, they're considered a green because of that high nitrogen content and are excellent for balancing out browns such as straw or leaves, for example. Their tiny particle size means it'll get to work straight away and the microbes will break down that nitrogen into that plant available form that we're after. Just spread them onto the compost heap like this when you add your browns and let them speed up the decomposition process, putting a pep in your compost heap step. Now, worms love coffee grounds as well. It actually aids their digestion. So you can add them to your wormery along with other ingredients as well. It seems that worms like a caffeine fix as much as we do. What about tea bags, I hear you ask? Well, yes, add them in as well. But bear in mind that the bags, the skins of the tea bags, often contain plastics. So if you want to add the whole bag, make sure you switch to a brand that has fully biodegradable outers. What the cluck? Eggshells? Yes, sirree. Eggshells are a fantastic source of calcium, as well as other trace elements like magnesium. So don't shell out on expensive soil amendments. Save your shells instead. Before we use these, we're going to have to sterilise them so we don't get a case of salmonella on our hands or something like that. So let's go and do that. OK, so we've got two options for sterilising our eggshells. The first is to spread them out onto a tray and pop them into a low heat in the oven for a few minutes. Or we can microwave them on high power for at least 10 seconds. Once they're done, crush them up to increase their surface area, or better still, grind them up into a fine powder using a pestle and mortar, a high-speed blender or coffee grinder. The calcium within an eggshell is locked up as calcium carbonate, making it unavailable to plants as it is. But by grinding it up into this fine powder, we've made it a lot easier for your soil life to get to work on it, turning it into a form plants can use. What we've in essence done is turn eggshells into a fabulous slow release source of calcium released over several months. Spread your eggshells onto beds in exactly the same way as coffee grounds, so thinly over the surface. Its high calcium content is going to be great for plants that will grow in here that are prone to blossom end rot, so things like um, tomatoes, peppers and zucchini or courgettes for example. 
Calcium is great at helping to build cell walls too, so this is going to be a real powerhouse for next season's crops. And calcium is also great for leafy greens like kale and cabbage for example. And worms absolutely love eggshells, especially at this consistency, because just like coffee grounds, it serves as a grit, helping their digestion and improving their general health. And what do happy, healthy worms mean? Good compost and good soil. If you don't have a wormery, just add it to your compost heap to help the worms there. They'll love you for it. While we're down here, just let me take a moment to dispel a myth about eggshells and slugs. Eggshells might uh, keep slugs away if you had literally thousands of them in a big thick ring around your plants, but really they're not that effective. And the same goes for coffee grounds. You're best sticking to natural, wildlife friendly forms of slug control, such as slug traps. Give me some skin, bruh. A banana a day helps keep the doctor away or something like that. I eat at least one a day and my daughter is mad on the things. And what do you get when you eat lots of bananas? Well, lots of banana skins, of course. You'll find plenty of advice about using banana skins on the internet, but I'm afraid this is another area where there are lots of myths to be debunked. Banana skins are a relatively good source of potassium, as well as micronutrients such as calcium, but the values of the amounts in the skin are often grossly exaggerated. Some people recommend soaking the skins in water for several days to create a nutrient-rich tea, but in reality this isn't very strong or effective. Really, the best thing you can do is add your skins to the compost heap, where, like other ingredients, they'll rot down to release their nutrients into the final crumbly compost. And bananas are great at this time of year in winter because there's often less coming off the garden. So it's just another thing to add to the compost heap to keep everything going. And last up is wood ash. And by wood ash, I mean ash from clean, untreated wood. You can use ash from uh, charcoal as well, but avoid ash from barbecue briquettes and definitely coal, which has a very high sulfur content. Wood ash is a fantastic natural fertiliser. It's got good levels of potassium and phosphorus, as well as lots and lots of micronutrients, which if you think about it, the shrub or tree will have taken up during the course of its life. And now it's in concentrated form in this ash. In fact, that's where the name potash, the name for nutrient forms of potassium comes from, because wood ash used to be collected up in metal pots, pot ash. The bits of charcoal you get, the partially burned wood, a biochar, which has an almost impossibly gigantic surface area of nooks and crannies that are great for soil biology. Lots of homes for all those microorganisms that make outstanding soil. I collect wood ash from my wood fire here, and at this time of year there's plenty of it. Use your common sense of course, only collect it once it's completely cooled down, and never mix hot ash with plastic. Metal tubs are best. Like our other natural soil amendments, ash is great for simply sprinkling onto beds. It's quite water soluble though, and easily washes through. So do add some during the winter as it's produced, but save some for the growing season as well. Because um, it's actually quite alkaline, this is a great one to use around uh, brassica family crops like these uh, broccoli here. For the same reason, do avoid using it around acid lovers like um, blueberries, rhododendrons, raspberries and so on. And don't use it where you're going to grow potatoes because alkaline soils can encourage a uh, potato scab. Its alkaline nature makes wood ash a great alternative to lime to help neutralise acidic soils. It's about half as strong as lime, so you can use approximately twice as much to achieve the same effect. And yes, you guessed it, wood ash, like our other natural treatments, is great on the compost heap. It's not only going to add its fertility, but all those little bits of charcoal are going to be homes for those magical microorganisms that help this whole heap do its magical thing. Also, because it's slightly alkaline and compost heaps tend to go slightly on the acid side, it'll help to bring it back into a more natural balanced state. Just add a couple of handfuls to every foot or so depth of uh, other material that you add. Nothing goes to waste in this household, believe me. Are you saving any of these plentiful and natural soil amendments? Let me know what you're up to in the comments below. 
If you've enjoyed this video, you might like our other recent uploads on improving soil naturally. They proved real hits, and I've got a hunch that if you've missed them, you'll also enjoy them. Hey, and never miss another video either. Get on and subscribe and ding the notification bell so you are always kept in the loop. I'll catch you next time.